Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Amy Barter and I work on the support team here at MedPlus. In today's webinar, I'll be reviewing how to build your first app for the Kindle Fire. But first, I want to let you know that although today's webinar has been pre-recorded, we do still have MagPlus team members available in the chat window to answer any questions that may come to mind as you follow along. So please feel free to reach out to them in there. So for those of you that are new to MagPlus, I'd first like to give a very general overview of the production process, and then we can dive a bit deeper into the specifics of distributing your content on Kindle Fire devices through Amazon. So as you can see on our homepage here, um, if we scroll down a little bit, to the this is how it works section. There are four main steps in the MagPlus process. Step number one, create. This is where you're going to create your content using our free InDesign plugin. And you can download that for free here from our website. If you scroll up to the top here, you can click on this big green button to get the tools for free. Next, number two is Preview, and this is where you're going to review that content to make sure it's functioning the way you'd like and expect using the MagPlus Reviewer app that you can download to your tablet device for free also from the appropriate app store. Number three here is Finish, and that's when you're going to upload that uh, finalized content to your MagPlus Publish portal and generate an app that meets your specifications. And then step four here is publish, and that's where you're finally going to distribute the app either internally or via an online marketplace such as the Apple App Store, Google Play, or in our case today, uh, through Amazon. So today's webinar is going to focus on really these last two steps. So we're assuming that you've already gone through the design process in steps one and two, and if you like more information about that process, we have a lot of tutorials and videos um, on our website here for you to watch at any time. And you can access those just by scrolling to the top of the page here, clicking on the videos link. And then we have quite a list of different videos, including if you scroll down towards the bottom, we have tutorial videos that'll take you through all of the design process, including a few that I'd recommend that we're not really going to cover today um, I'd probably recommend looking at the you know, basics on the InDesign plugin, setting up your reviewer app on your device, and then um, definitely the MagPlus production tool. That's where you're going to bundle all of your verticals together to create your final MIB file, which stands for MagPlus issue bundle. And that's where we're going to kind of start the process off today, assuming that we already have those files ready. So getting back to the Kindle Fire, once you've done all of your designing and you've decided to take the next step and uh, purchase a MagPlus published portal, this is what that's going to look like. You can customize a lot of this in order to more accurately depict your um, brand's look and feel in terms of colors and logos here. But for our purposes, we're gonna leave it at the default. And this is where your brand name would show up. For us, we're just calling this the MagPlus webinar app for the time being. So when you first enter this portal, um, it's going to uh, start you off on the issues page, and this is actually where we're going to eventually upload our issue. But for now, we're going to skip a little bit past that and go to the apps tab. This is where we're actually going to build the shell of our app. So if we click on that, we're actually gonna have a few options in terms of what type of app we wanna build. Now our published portal is activated for all of the different types of apps that are currently possible to create using MagPlus. That's iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire. So I'm gonna go ahead and click over to Kindle Fire. But if for some reason you're not seeing one of these devices and you'd like to publish for one of them, um, you can go ahead and contact your salesperson to activate that for you. Or if you're not sure who your salesperson is, just go ahead and email sales at magplus.com and someone will get back to you right away. Now we see under the Kindle Fire tab, we have a few things that we need to complete before we can generate an app build. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do here is go into the Upload Help Mib section. And a Help Mib is just like a very small issue. It's one page that describes how the app works and how the user can 
um, navigate around the app. So I've already created one and I have it here in my Mag Plus Kindle Fire folder under this help section and I've highlighted it in green. It's called test.help. It's version one dot mib. And if I just do a quick look on this file and the quick look tool is something that comes for free with the Mag Plus download from magplus.com. And in order to activate it after installing the Mag Plus tool set, all you do is you select a MIB from your finder and hit the space bar. And we're going to get some basic information about this MIB. So we can see that this MIB was built for the standard fire, which is 1024 by 600. So I want to make sure when I'm uploading my MIB to the publish site that I have the correct Kindle Fire MIB type selected. So I have the 1024 by 600 here. I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to browse to that file in my folder structure. And that's on my desktop. And here's my green MIB file. I'll go ahead and upload. And I do have the option if I wanted to um, upload a couple different sizes as well in order for them to better fit the uh, high definition Kindle Fire screens, I can do that. But for the time being, and for the sake of um, keeping this webinar short, I'm just going to do the one for now. Now it says incomplete, but I'm assuming that it's still loading. So I'm just going to check in here. And if I go to my histories button, I can see if that went through successfully. And it looks like it did. It says status is valid. So now if I go back to the apps tab, I'll see that it's now considered complete. Now the next one we have down here is the application text section. And that is basically all of the default text that is present within the app. So um, certain messages that pop up when a user does something. All of these are editable um, so that you can change them in order to um, more accurately fit your brand's um, kind of tone or if you just certain words don't um, seem to fit with your specific app, you can certainly change those out. You would just click into here, click edit on the specific text that you want to change, change it, save, and then the next time you generate your app, that text will be changed to what you have um, entered here. We're going to leave all of ours at the default, and you're certainly welcome to do that. That's why it's already set to complete, because there's already a text for all of the different functions that need one. The last one that we're seeing is incomplete here is the build settings section. So we're going to click into that. And this is where we need to start actually entering a few different items that will allow us to build our app. Now this pink section up here is for administrators only, so we can skip past that portion. You're going to start filling things out where it says build settings under the blue box. Now it's starting to ask us about some key store items, and you may not know what a key store is, but it's something that we need to create in order to basically sign our app um, and tell Amazon who's created this app. So we have some instructions on our website in order to create this key store file. So if you go to the support.magplus.com page, and if you search for key store, there's going to be an instruction article called creating a key store file. And there's actually a little line of code that we need to cut and paste from here in order to complete our key store. And as you'll notice in this article, we need to use a program called Terminal in order to do this. So I'm going to open up Terminal. And as soon as that loads, I'll drag it over here into view so you can all see it. So in order to create this key store, I basically want to copy this first portion of code here up to where it gets bolded out here. And I'm going to paste it into terminal. And then this bold part is the key alias that we want to assign to our app. Now that's typically going to be the actual name of your app. 
So for my case, I'm going to go back here and type in mag plus. I'm going to use an underscore for my space. And then I'm going to call it Kindle. So my key alias is mag plus underscore Kindle. Next, I just need to grab the rest of the code after the bolded section, copy it, paste it into terminal, hit return. And next it's going to ask me for a key store password. This can be pretty much anything that you want. Um, I'm going to enter just a basic password. It's going to ask you to um, re-enter it. It's going to ask you for some information about yourself. And this is what's going to tell Amazon who's creating this key store and who's trying to submit this app for approval. So I'll enter my name here. I work in Mad Plus support, so I'll enter that as my organizational unit. Next, I'm going to enter Mad Plus as my organization. I'm based out of our San Diego office, so I'll enter that as my city. Our state is California. Two letter country code, United States for me. And then it's going to ask me to confirm all of the information I put in. As long as it's all correct, you can just type in yes and hit enter. And then it's going to ask us if we want to assign a separate password within our key store. I'm just going to use the same password that I used for the key store itself. That's perfectly fine to do. Enter it again to confirm. And now it's saying that it's storing my key store file for me. And I can find that within my user folder here. So here's my key store. I'm going to drag this to my desktop. Now the last thing that we do before this key store is complete is just to rename it slightly by adding to the very end of it dot file. So now that that's ready, I'm going to exit out of terminal. I'm going to exit out of the Mac Plus support site and I'm going to return to the publish site where I can enter in all of the settings I've just created for my key store. So the password that I had assigned was mag plus. The key alias, if you recall, was mag plus underscore Kindle. I assigned the same key alias password within the key store. So these are going to be exactly the same and that's perfectly fine if you wanna do that as well. My package name, um, this basically you can read through the description over here in terms of how it needs to be formatted. But typically what they recommend you do is that you um, take your domain name for your website, if you have one, and reverse it. So instead of magplus.com, I'm going to put com.magplus. And then I'm going to enter my app name after that, so magplus Kindle. Since this is the very first version of this app that I'm creating, I'm going to make it version 1.0.0 and then I can increase it from there after I create updates. And then I'm going to upload the keystore file that I just created in Terminal. So I'm going to choose file. It's on my desktop and it's called my release key.keystore.file. Now enabling the store means that I'm going to have some purchasable content within my app, which I plan to do, so I'm going to leave that checked. If you only plan to have free content and you don't plan to have a free subscription, you can uncheck this, but keep in mind if you do want to have a free subscription, that's still accessed within the store, so you'll want to leave that checked even though it's free. The live window enabled um, basically means that there's going to be a button within your menu called the live button that can access any URL of your choosing. I'm going to go ahead and leave that activated so that I can push people to our website directly from my app menu. And finally, I need an icon image file for my app. And I've already pre-prepared one, so I'm going to upload that now. I'm going to hit choose file in order to select my icon and I've just gone ahead and put that in my Kindle Fire folder here icon.png 
And this is the image that, going, that is going to show up on the um, device in order to represent your app. So um, you're probably familiar with this if you've done an iOS app in the past. Um, it shows up on the home page. So I'm going to save all of these settings. And now we see that our build settings section is also complete. Now there's one final thing that we want to do if we plan to sell things in this app before we actually go ahead and generate our new build. You'll see that this is now an option. It wasn't before because all of these weren't complete yet. Um, but because we do want to sell items in our store and not have all of the content be free, we do want to enter this Amazon market settings section. And this is going to ask for an Amazon shared secret. Now in order to get our Amazon shared secret, we're going to have to enter the Amazon mobile app distribution portal and create an app. Now I'm going to reference um, an app that we've already created, the Mag Plus Reviewer for the Kindle Fire. And I'll just show you where you can actually access that after you've set up all of the items that you need to set up here. So the first tab that we're gonna see in here after we've created a new app is the general information tab. And this is where after we've created a title for our app, we're automatically going to be assigned an application key by Amazon. And this is actually what we want to copy and paste into the Mag Plus publish site where we were before. So we'll copy and paste that in there and save. And now we can see that all three sections here are complete as well as the Amazon market setting being complete as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and generate a new build. I had done one previously here, and so when we click this new green button that's popped up since everything's been completed, we're going to see that we've created a new build here that's just been started, it hasn't been completed yet. So that'll take a little bit of time to go through, um, but in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, we can go back to the Amazon developer portal here and go through a bit more of the information that's included and what you'll need to enter, including um, the category that you want to assign your app to. This is also where you're going to enter your support contact information like the email address, phone number, and customer support website so that if any of your end users have any trouble, they can easily contact you. The next tab over is the availability and pricing tab, and this is where you're actually going to set how much you want the app to be um, or to cost within Amazon. Um, for a lot of our clients, they set their app to free and then they charge for content within the app or in-app items here. So in this case, ours is free all around, but um, you can determine your pricing model based on um, how you see fit. The next tab over is the description tab, and this is where you can enter some information about the app itself. Um, Amazon gives you the option to enter either a short description or a long description or both. You can enter some keywords here for people searching kind of generally based on some uh, basic words. <clears throat> you can also enter some bullets um, in terms of some just short phrases um, for people to easily see what your app is all about. This is also where you set the language, so ours is set to English, but you can change that depending on um, who you're targeting. The next tab over is the Images and Multimedia tab, and this is where you're going to upload your icon once again, both a small version and a large version. This is also where you are going to upload some screenshots. So. You're gonna take some actual screenshots off your device and upload them here so that your users, before they've downloaded your app from Amazon, can kind of see generally what your app looks like inside. You also have the option here to add a promotional image or a video. It's not necessary, but you have the option to do so. The next tab over is your content rating. So based on what you include within your content, Amazon would like you to disclose that. And then they rate your app accordingly based on if you have any references to alcohol, violence, um, nudity, etc. 
The next tab over is the binary files tab and this is where you're actually going to upload at the very end of this process the file that we're generating here on the MagPlus publish site. So we'll skip that for the time being. The next tab over is release notes and this is where you can enter some information about what is included in a specific release of your app. For your very first version you probably won't have release notes because um, you haven't changed anything since a previous version since it's the very first one. So now that we've done that we're actually going to want to check back on our published site and see how our builds coming along. If I refresh here we'll see if it's been completed and it looks like it has. So now we have our most recent build here that we've created and in order to test that we can just simply click on this APK file which is going to download it to our computer. And then in order to test that on your device, all you need to do is email yourself that APK. And then for most devices, most Kindle Fire devices, you can simply just email it and then you should have an option to install directly from within that email. Now, since we haven't uploaded any of our issues yet, we're not going to actually see anything in our app if we install it at this point. So let's go ahead and head back over to the Issues tab here, and we'll add an issue. So I'll click this green Add New Issue button. I'm going to call it My First Issue, and I'm going to give it a short description, a really great issue. Now if you scroll down a bit, you see that there's three images listed here. The last two are only for older versions of our apps, so you likely, if you're creating this for the first time now, you won't have to upload these. This is for only iPad uh, apps before version 3.0. All we do need to upload is the store and newsstand file here, and I've already created one of those. So I'll navigate to it. I've called it Cover PNG, and that's the image that's going to show up within the app and represent this image for people to either download or purchase. If I scroll down a bit further, I have the option for additional resources. So this is only for our users that are using our SDK, so we're going to ignore that for the time being. But I want to make sure that we're distributing this on the right platforms. Currently, this is only marked off to distribute on iPad, which we're not actually working on today. We're working on Amazon for Kindle. So I'm going to check that off instead. I want this to be a paid issue. If I wanted it to be free, I would simply change the drop down selection to free issue, in which case we don't have to fill out any of these product ID sections. Those can be left blank. But since I do want it to be paid, I need to link this up to some information over on the Amazon Developer Portal. So I'm going to click, click back over here. And next I'm going to enter the in-app items section. Now we've set up a couple of test in-app purchases. One is a subscription and one is an entitlement. This is what you'll use for your issues, entitlement. In order to add an entitlement, you would simply click Add Entitlement here. I'll just click into the one that we've already created and show you what we've entered. We've given this entitlement a title, obviously, here, and it's called Test. And then we've also assigned an, a SKU to it, SKU. And this is what we want to actually copy and paste back into the MagPlus Publish site. So I'll copy that and I'm going to paste it in the Amazon Market Product ID section and I'll hit save. And this is basically how Amazon can tell which issues a certain user should be entitled to and allow them to make purchases. So once the user makes that purchase, every time they open the app, it's going to ping Amazon via that SKU and make sure that that user should be able to see that issue for free if they've already paid for it. 
So now we see a message and it says that we need to upload a MIB file and images before we can publish the issue. Well, we've already, we've already uploaded our cover, so we're good there, but we do need to upload the actual MIB file, which is the content. So I'm going to click the upload button. And again, I've already prepared that as I did the help MIB from earlier. So I'm going to click into my issue folder and here I have just a test issue MIB. And I'm going to go ahead and check off. I already know that it's a 1024 by 600, so I'll change the radio button here. I'll browse to that file. And then I'll go ahead and upload. It says it's processing here. I'm just going to click back into the issues tab, which is going to give me an overview of all of my issues. And now it tells me that there's an available MIB that's Kindle Fire 1024 by 600, which is great. Except that we'll notice that it's still under the unpublished section. Um, in order for Amazon to review your app and make sure that everything's working properly, we want to go ahead and publish this first issue. So I'm going to click back in. And I'm going to click this button that's now available since there's a MIB file that says publish now. It's going to warn me that once I publish this, I can't undo it, which is okay. And now it says, great, your issue has been saved and published. So now if I go back to the issues tab, we'll see that instead of it being under an unpublished header, it's now under a published header, which is great. That's exactly what we want. Now one of the last things that I want to do before we actually submit this to Amazon is add a subscription. We have subscriptions available via Amazon right now and iOS. I'm going to click into this tab. This tells me I don't have any subscriptions currently. I'm going to go ahead and add a new one by clicking the green button. I want this to be a free subscription, so I'm going to call it free subscription and give it a short description. This checkbox allows you to make the subscription visible or invisible in the store at any time. We obviously want it to be visible at this point, so I'm going to leave that checked. And then for Amazon, it's going to ask for two separate SKUs, one that's a parent SKU and one that is the basic SKU. So I'm going to go back to our Amazon portal and I'm going to go back into the general in-app items section. And I'm going to enter this test subscription that we set up previously. And if you were doing this from scratch, you would just click add a subscription here. But we'll use the one that we've already created. Now under general information, we're going to have one SKU, which we're going to assign ourselves. And we've assigned it as test.subscription, but you can make that anything you'd like. And that's considered the parent SKU here on the published site. So I'm going to copy it and paste it. And then I'm going to go back in here and on the subscription periods tab here, we're going to find one more SKU once that loads. And it looks like this actually hasn't been set up yet. So I'll go ahead and assign that myself. We'll call that test subscription two. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that back in here. And I'll save. And it says, great, subscription created, which is exactly what we want. So as long as these perfectly match the SKUs that are entered for your in-app purchases on Amazon, that's going to um, be able to communicate in the same way that the SKUs communicated for the issue and just confirm all of the entitlements for people who have made purchases within your app 
on their device. So at this point, we've set up our issues, we've set up our subscription, we've set up our actual app, which we've downloaded at this point. You would st install that on your device, test it, make sure everything's working properly. It looks like you intend it to. And now we can go ahead and download that, or I'm sorry, upload that same TGZ file that we've created here on the Kindle Fire tab, or I'm sorry, APK file that we've created here on the Kindle Fire tab. And we can go ahead and once we've finished out all of these sections here, and this is basically just some more information. Do you want a free trial for the subscription? Are you charging? What's the price, etc.? You can enter a description for this as well. Add some images. Same process basically as the app itself. Once we've downloaded, we have everything confirmed that it's ready to go. We're going to re-enter the binary file section. We'll upload it here. This already has a binary available, so we'll, this is what it'll look like once you've uploaded yours. And then you have the option to submit app. Ours has already been submitted, so it isn't green, but once yours is ready, this will be not grayed out. You'll have the option to submit it. And then just make sure after you've submitted the app itself that you go back into the in-app section and click into your in-app purchases and submit those as well. So again, these aren't completely filled out, but you would, um, once they are filled out, have the option to click this submit in-app item button. And you would do that for both of them in order to get both of them approved. And that's basically it. Um, Amazon doesn't give a specific time period for their review process, but it's generally about the same as Apple, which is about six to 10 business days, um, at which point they'll get back to you and let you know if the app's been approved or if they have any questions for you, they'll email you that. And then you can go ahead and start uploading new issues as you have them ready right here in the publish portal. You can make any updates to your app if you want to make changes to your settings. Um, once you do that, you would just go back to the Apps tab, make your changes within the Kindle Fire tab, generate a new build, and you can upload that as an update to Amazon at any time. And this is that button in order to do an update, add upcoming version. So I hope this webinar has been informational for all of you and if you have any questions certainly feel free to reach out to us we'd be happy to answer any for you either here in the chat or if anything comes to mind after the fact certainly get in touch with us at support at magplus.com and we'd be happy to help you create your first kindle app for yourself thank you very much bye bye